On the first run, when you put it into the still, I use a sieve. I had a few times just poured it straight into the still because I thought that actually cooking the corn might help it a little bit. It doesn't. It'll uh, go down to the bottom of your still and it'll burn on there. So I strain it out, just put a colander in there of some kind. And pour in your mash. And once it's drained out, you can go ahead and compost the mash so that it doesn't sit in there. I raise it up with a couple chopsticks for the second gallon. and let it drain. Now this is a two gallon still. I wouldn't advise filling any still more than two thirds of the way full and this is a little bit higher than that. It's about three quarters or maybe a little bit more. You don't want to overfill it because as it heats up of course the liquid expands and you don't want the thing to boil over because you can have an alcohol fire. But this should be good enough. But yeah, make sure you don't overfill your still. This is my little pot still that I got from Bristol Biofuels on the internet. I used to read about how stills worked and it seemed awfully complicated. But once you actually see how it's done, it's a fairly simple process. All this is is a kettle. They put a hole through the top here that we'll, we'll put our tube where the alcohol condenses through. Well, this one is just held on with paper clips. Which is good because that way it doesn't get too much pressure built up in there. If you're not watching it though, there is the danger that some of your alcohol can boil out and start an alcohol fire. So you want to make sure that your temperature doesn't get too hot. So with that clipped on there, This pipe goes on the top. What will happen is as this alcohol begins to boil, the procedure is simple. Alcohol has a lower boiling point than water, so at 172 degrees the alcohol will start to, to uh, uh, boil off. Water is 212 degrees, so you don't want to let the temperature get above 212 or you'll have water and alcohol um, cooking off of it. The alcohol will come up through this pipe and back down and come out here, which I'll put another tube on here. That'll wind up going to my jug. And then to cool it as it condenses, there's two tubes here. This one will go into this bucket of water, which I have to change about every hour when I'm running this. And to do one run, it'll take up to four to six hours the way that I do it. But this little connection on here, this is a fish pump for a uh, water pump for a fish tank. You put that in there, put that in the water, that will pump water up through there. This is an outer tube that goes around the tube that it condenses in. So that will push up through here and then back out on this end. that in. Turn it on. And to monitor the temperature, the guy who made these, all it is is a cork and you run a meat thermometer in there and just plug it in this end. 
You can get replacement thermometers and corks at Walmart. That'll tell you what your temperature is. When it gets up to 172, you want to turn the temperature down. I keep it on low, and usually that's fine. Just make sure it doesn't get up above 212. Put that over the end there. And tighten it on. And you're already distilling. The end of this tube where your alcohol condenses will come down here. Just go ahead and put it into a jug. All right, our first run is underway. It's gotten up to the right temperature, and you'll know that as soon as you can see the alcohol start dripping down this tube and into your jug. As soon as that happens, turn the heat down on low, and you just want to keep it there in the right temperature uh, range. You don't want to let it get too hot, or you'll have a lot of problems on your hands. It's dripping down here and into this jug. It's already has about a half a gallon in it from another run, but out of this gallon and a half to two gallons of mash, we should get a half a gallon distilled out of it in probably four to six hours, depending on how long you let it run. Uh, you may be able to get by with three to four. I let it keep going just to be on the safe side to make sure we get out as much as possible. You can see the level of alcohol in here already. It's right, about right here, so there's about a half a gallon left to fill in here. You can see the reflection of how it's dripping in there. There's how it drips out of the tube. And just keep it in there until the run is finished. Make sure about every hour that you change your bucket of water to make sure that it's cool water in there so that it will get your alcohol condensed. And then just wait and keep an eye on it. With washing the still, it's best to do it when it's warm. But I take off the tube that the alcohol comes down through and run hot water through it until it's well rinsed out. And I run some water back through the other way. I always wash the thermometer and cork. Then especially when it's still warm, wash out your pipe. With these tubes, since all they have is water going through them, I never worry about it. And I actually just leave them connected. Make sure that you're on water. Down through your pipe. Both ends. You got anything that's in there out. Then lastly, let's pour out what's left of your mash. And just wash out the rest of the sill the way you would any potter pan. And you're ready to go for your second run. This is a single X after the first run. You can see that it's kind of milky in color. That's the fusel oils that are in it, which this 